Hi and welcome. So today I want to share with you why controlling yourself is not going to help you resolve your emotional eating. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist and emotional eating expert. And I wanted to touch in on this topic because a lot of the times when women are dealing with emotional eating, you know, they feel they have to really control themselves and use a lot of willpower. And so I felt that way too when I was on my own emotional eating journey and my clients feel that way at some point as well. We think if only we could control this pattern, control this behavior, then finally things would be resolved. And so, you know, it's interesting, this pattern develops over time and emotional eating is usually you know, the definition I give is when we use food to soothe ourselves for any discomfort, any sort of unresolved emotions, any stressors, and we use the food as a coping mechanism to give us this temporary relief. And so it is not true resolution. It is just a way to get by. And I am all for resolution and resolving issues. I don't like band-aids and coping mechanisms. And so When we have this pattern, you know, it can be serving us when, you know, and it usually develops when we're really young, when we have these unmet needs and these emotions and we don't know what to do with them. So we were either shamed or ignored, um, you know, or something happened around our emotions. And that's really typical in our society anyways. And so we develop this coping pattern, this coping mechanism just to deal with that discomfort. Doesn't mean the emotions and the needs went away. We just found a way to distract ourselves and kind of not think about it. And so as we grow up and we have more stressors and more discomfort, this pattern can get really out of control. We start doing it more and we start, you know, noticing that our health might be deteriorating. We might have more Um, you know, weight issues, we might have more digestive issues. So all of these symptoms start popping up. And we think if only I could control this pattern, because this is what is, this is what's going on. This is what's, you know, giving me all of these issues. I want to control it. I want to just not be obsessing. And in a way, yes, this pattern is at play, this behavior, we want to get rid of it. But why did we even create this behavior? So going back to the roots of it, we created this because we had a lot of emotions. Um, Something came up that was unresolved for us. We didn't have our needs met that kept, you know, those emotions that we don't resolve and process stay in our bodies and we feel uncomfortable. And so we developed this coping mechanism to just feel okay. And so now as an adult, we're looking back at this pattern we created to feel okay, to create some kind of, you know, safety or comfort for us. And we're trying to take out the pattern. And so the pattern is helping us meet our needs. So it's almost like there are two parts of us, the part that had these needs that were unmet, and then the part that's trying to meet the needs or at least distract from the discomfort. And then there's us as an adult. And so we try with diets and we try with exercise plans and we try with all these different behavioral changes to wipe out this emotional eating pattern. So there's me, the pattern, and the needs that are not met. And we try to pull it out and control on the outside what that pattern looks like. We put in all our willpower, we put in all our effort, and we're really, really trying and we can do it for a while, a month, two months, a year, years. But this part of us is growing bigger and bigger and it has a lot of power. And eventually when we don't meet those needs or it doesn't have some kind of soothing or coping, um, even though that's not resolution, it will take over and it will do what it needs to do to just have that temporary relief. And so this is why we need to stop controlling ourselves and willpowering ourselves and learn how to create more of a harmonious relationship. And this is something that I do with clients when we do the somatic psychotherapy sessions um, in my program because I use a process with parts work and inner child work, but it's at a deeper level in the body. So we're resolving the situation because if we just take out this piece without knowing how to meet the needs and 
you know, I'm using the emotional part, the true emotional eating, but there are other triggers that triggers this pattern as well. And so we need to look at what are the different needs and it's going to be nuanced for everyone. And so what is important to do is to recognize that these are all parts of you. And if this part loses, this part loses. And so maybe you control your emotional eating for a little bit, but you still lose in the end. You want to make sure everything is on board and everything is a feeling good. And so this is a very different way of thinking about emotional eating. And so when we're able to really meet the needs under the emotional eating and start giving ourselves new ways to meet those needs, not temporary relief, then we can move forward really powerfully. But we need to do this at a deeper level because this is all happening sort of subconsciously and in the body and we need tools to dive deeper in order to create a situation where we really get into the deep roots of this. This is not, you know, this is a way we create deep resolution so that when we move forward, it's really clean. A lot of the times with diets and exercise and and sort of changing the outside behavior, we haven't cleaned up the root. We haven't cleared it out. We haven't created a really fertile place to put in these new ways of being that actually resonate with us. We're kind of just piling ice cream on top of poop and thinking, yes, if I just push enough, it's going to work. But you know, you always feel that discomfort, that sort of, you know, pressure and that control, it doesn't quite go away. When you do it in a harmonious way, it feels more easeful. It does become more effortless. And of course, it takes that bit of effort to do this in our work. Of course, we need that effort, but it's not efforting for years and decades and your whole life of just making sure and restricting yourself only to have it blow up in your face. So when we stop controlling ourselves and we actually start understanding ourselves and finding out what our deeper needs are. And it's almost like an exhale. Like that sounds so much better. If you're in a fight with someone and they open up and want to know what you need, you're going to relax. You're going to be open to that. And so this is a great way to really give yourself and meet, you know, kind of re it's resolving that original time that this pattern might have been developed. And for everyone, it's really different. Um, but then you get to feel at ease in your body and you will start feeling at ease around food. You'll feel that confidence because it's almost like you're not having that internal conflict and that battle and that self-sabotage going on in your head all the time. It's going to be that you're for yourself and that feels really good. And so this is something we do inside of the Emotional Eating Evolution Program, which is my signature program. It's the methodology that I use to move through my own emotional eating and what I've helped clients move through their emotional eating with. And, you know, there are other areas that we need to look at and we need to relearn, but this is a major area. And this is why I am not about you pushing and, you know, fighting yourself. Of course, there requires some effort and we need to look at things in, in a new way, but there is a difference with how we go about that. There is an openness when we push and punish ourselves. You know, there's a part of us that's giving at guest resistance. We need to really look at it. So if what I'm saying is resonating with you and it sounds like you are missing this piece in your emotional eating journey and you're ready to really resolve it, I'd love to invite you to check out more about the Emotional Eating Evolution Program. I'll put a link below. Or if you are ready to you know, find out more, you can also book in a call to see how the program can support you in your journey. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. And I look forward to sharing more with you and I hope you have a great day.